Why? Because those laws pointed to us and said we are forever sinners. So Jesus came and he took that law and he bore it on his body. So there's nothing wrong with legalism. It's people that say they hate legalism. It's, it's death, it's death, it's death. No, legalism is not death. Grace allows you to come up past legalism and out of an honest and a pure heart, you keep the commandments of God without do's and don'ts. But rather from a pure heart, you go back to the, to, to the Garden of Eden passing, surpassing the law, going back to the Garden of Eden, you got a relationship with Jesus Christ by the blood of Christ, and you keep the commandments in your heart because you receive Ezekiel 36, 26 that says, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will place within you. And I will take out the stony heart of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Then I will put my Holy Spirit within you and you will keep my commandments and judgments to do them, which is to go ye into all the world and make disciples of every nation, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So now you see it's grace that pulls you up. You know, it's not just pulls you up to the law. It pulls you up past the law because the law couldn't give you a new heart. The law could give you commandments, but even if you did all the commandments of the law, you, the minute you took that lamb, you were dead. Because you're saying that you got sin in you, or you wouldn't be bringing that thing. But now, when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he nailed that law to him. So the commandment now that we keep is the commandment of obeying Christ. Jesus says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask. What you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will send you that helper that will come. And he, he will be with you to help you carry out those commandments. I quote Titus one more time. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that by denying an ungodly and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously. So this particular scripture gives it to you from both sides. Grace producing works. When it appears to you, that grace is going to teach you how to do the things that are pleasing in his sight. It's going to teach you to live above the, the way you used to live. You're not going to live the old way. You're going to live the new way. And if you do sin, you are going to take it to God. He's your advocate, your lawyer. You know, uh, John says in the second chapter of the first epistle of the general of John, these things I have written to you that you sin not. But if you do sin, then we have an advocate of the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is our propitiation of our sins. So now, God does not expect us to sin, but it's not because of legalism. See, legalism says keep the rules and you're righteous, but you can't be because you got to bring that lamb. So you don't want to ever go legal, legalistic because if you go in the flesh, then you're going to get to the point where you have to admit that you're a sinner somewhere along the line. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And if you're walking in the flesh, you ain't inheriting. But the grace says, by my blood, I'm going to forgive you of your sins. I'm going to wash you. And I'm going to empower you to keep the works of God from your heart. You're going to obey the Lord from your heart. Nobody's going to have to make, give you a commandment. The commandment is going to be written inside of you, a new heart and a new spirit. And you're going to be able to do the things that are pleasing in the sight, including the end of James when it says the grace of God. Uh, I mean, that the grace of God, but rather... Um, Pure religion and undefiled before God, the Father, is this. To visit the hope, the fatherless and the widows and their distresses and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. So let's go back. If you have grace, grace producing works is to visit the fatherless and the widows and their distresses and to keep yourself holy. That's grace that produces that. Let's put it this way. Let's take the other great scripture. For well, grace you are saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus 
that it was ordained that we should, it was preordained that we should walk in these works. So in other words, grace produces works that were preordained that we should do. So grace empowers us to live the Christian life and it empowers us for service. Do we make mistakes? Of course, there's our humanity. We'll always have to contend with it. But as far as a sin attitude, no, we're not to have a sin attitude anymore. We are to be the righteousness of God in Christ and we are to walk in holiness and in love. But if we sin, then God is our lawyer. God is our high priest. He'll take care of that. But let me give you a remedy for Christian maturity. The Bible says in that first, on that same first general epistle of John, it says, this then is the message that we have heard of him, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, I'm going to move to this pretty slowly because you need to be able to see where I'm coming from here. This then is the message that God is light. So Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, correct? Yes. So if you're walking in the light, okay, you're going to be in Jesus. And in God, there's no darkness at all. But if you say that you have fellowship with him, but you walk in darkness, then you will lie and do not the truth. But if you walk in that same light we've been talking about, as he is in the light, then you have fellowship and the blood is cleansing. This is a passage of scripture that says when you walk in the light, that means the unction of the spirit. When you walk in the light, you have fellowship and the blood is working on your behalf without you even asking for it. Because we always quote, oh, if you confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of our sins. Well, that's important. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, he's going to do what? He's going to give us fellowship. His blood's going to cleanse us from all sin. If all sin is cleansed, you are not a sinner saved by grace. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, it's his righteousness and it's his blood that wipes out your sins, but you are not a sinner saved by grace. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is because that doctrine basically rules out repentance. See, if you're not living right, it's my job as a minister to say to you, repent or reform your ways. Get back to God. Get on your knees and tell him all about it. And don't hide anything. Be honest with him about the evil of your deeds. And he will forgive you. The Bible says he's faithful and just. But if you go around and say this unscriptural, unbiblical phrase was well, sinners saved by grace god knows we want to sin every day but he saves us no god doesn't know you're going to sin every day that's why he's saying walk in the light if you walk in the light the light don't sin yeah but the flesh just you know the flesh is strong you know the flesh makes the, the flesh is not stronger than the light <laughs>